Today I'm going to be counting down 20 tips that make Blender easy. Let's go. Ever wanted to recreate that effect of light particles hitting dust in the air? Well, here's how. I'm going to select the windows, tab into edit mode, and then just select each of the panes. I'm going to press E to extrude, just extrude that out. And then I'm going to S to scale it up. So you see this is going to be the path that the light takes through the room. Okay, that looks good. We'll go into our rendered view and they've taken the glass material with them. So we need to change that. I'll show you how to set up from scratch. You just search for an emission node. You plug that into volume and you change that to around 0.5. And yeah, I mean, that's looking pretty good already. We can maybe change the color to kind of bluey kind of color. And yeah, wow, that's got a real kind of ambiance to it. Ever wanted to quickly add detail and realism to your model? Here's how. I'll show you two plugins. Just search import and enable import as decal. You'll have to download this, but it's free. And then you can also import images as planes, which is already in Blender. So if I shift A, I can go to my image and import image as plane. And then I'll just import this cracked wall image. Rotate that 90 degrees, enable snapping, stick that to the wall. Look at that. Look at how quick that is to add this cool crumbly wall effect. But if you wanted a bit more control over this, then I'll show you the other one, image as decal. So then you can just import that and stick that to the wall as well. But the difference here is you have all these options. So you can turn on the scratches. You can really play around with it and blend it into your, your scene. And yeah, that's how to quickly add details to your scene. If you're wondering why my rendered view has this kind of nice painterly quality instead of the bumpy, dotty, noisy effect that yours might have, it's really simple. You just go to render and then you can click denoise. So that's the basic. And then with denoise, if I wanted to easily add snow to a scene in Blender, that's super easy. Just go to your preferences and enable real snow. You can then select the mesh you want to add snow to and just click add snow. And look at that, it's made this snow object on top of our tree. And you can move that off, but it's also parented to the tree. So if we move the tree, the snow comes with it. And you can change how much of the tree is covered, as well as the height of the snow. Ever wanted to make dramatic skies in Blender? I'll show you how. Go to your preferences and enable dynamic sky. We can then go to create and create a dynamic sky. Then go to your world and select the dynamic sky you just made. And that's already looking quite cool, but we have loads of settings here that we can change. So you can increase the cloud density, change the sky color, change the horizon color, change the cloud color, fully customizable skies at your fingertips. Ever wanted to make hanging cables in Blender? I'll show you how. First, I'm gonna add a few cubes that we're gonna hang cables between, just arrange them however. Then come up to edit preferences and type in extra and enable the extra curves add-on. We're now going to select two of our objects and then press shift A and add a curve. Come down to knots and choose quaternary. And look at that. So we can change the kind of angle of the dangle. And then you can also come to your data and you have loads of options here to you know, increase the thickness. And then you do it again. You now have hanging cables. Ever wanted to link up Blender and Photoshop? Well, here's how. Go to Edit Preferences and choose File Path. You can then scroll down to Applications and choose Image Editor. You can then locate your Photoshop EXE file and click Accept. We can then change this to Image Editor. And now all we have to do is click Image, Edit Externally, and it will open up Photoshop. So here we have access to all the normal tools. What you have to do is export it, just override the file pretty much. Can then go back to Blender and choose Reload. And there you go. Want to add cool floaty particles with a mind of their own? Here's how. Shift A and add a cube. Then come down to Particles and click Plus. I'm now I'm going to increase the lifespan and I'm going to change the physics to Boids. If we hit Play, I'll show you what's happening. I'm going to just click on Flop and then hit the minus and you'll see they start to disperse now a bit. I'm now going to add another cube and we're now going to click the plus and add a goal. I'm also going to increase the render scale. So they're now starting to disperse, but if we want them to come and follow this cube, then in the goal, just use the eyedropper to select that cube. 
Now you'll see they kind of flock towards it. You can grab that and they'll follow it around. Pretty cool. So let's say I have added a curve, just a path. I made it look something like this. Now I can come into the data and under geometry, I can extrude it, but that's extruded it up. And let's say I wanted it to extrude sideways. I can press A to select everything and then control T, you can rotate it like this. So then I just have to type in 90 and there you go. If you have a model and you want to separate it out into different parts, all you have to do is select the face and press L. You can then choose from this menu to select the normals, the material, or the seam. To get the entire axe, I'll choose normals, then I'll press P and separate selection. You then have an axe. There's no easy way to delete materials in Blender, but if you come up to the top right, under view layer, you can choose Blender file. We can then select our materials and delete them. You can also choose from this shading drop down you can choose cavity, which adds a nice effect and can make modeling complex models more easy. So I've added a couple of lights to this scene, but let's say I want to art direct it further and add some depth to the shadows. You can do this by shift A and add a point light, but you can then change the power to say negative 0.5, change the diffuse to 100 and you now have a negative light so this can be quite helpful for really tweaking your renders if you go to your preferences and type extra in the add-ons you can enable the add mesh extra objects and you can press shift a to add a mesh extra wall factory so this is going to bring up an editable wall but for this i'm just going to tab into edit mode select everything and then press f3 and search for randomize. That looks pretty good. You can then scale up the blocks, make sure that you have individual origins selected. And then lastly, you can add a bevel modifier and that's how you can make a quick wall. So you can navigate the viewport by clicking on this widget to rotate around. But did you know that you could also rotate while holding Alt and you'll snap to different views. You can also hold Z, change between rendered, solid, material and wireframe views. Let's say you want to make these chess pieces. You could add a cylinder and extrude and so on, E and S, but that could take you all day. So a better way is shift A, we'll go back to meshes. And if you've added the extra add-on, you'll have a single vert. So you can now add that. Okay, that's there. We can select it and then we can press E to extrude it. You can now press A to select everything, rotate that 90 degrees, and we'll just move it so the origin point is in the front. You can then come down to spin, and voila. Shade that smooth, and yeah, that was pretty speedy. You've been beveling wrong. So if we tab into edit mode, select these two edges and bevel, Sure, you can do it like this, but if you go too far, then that's going to end up with bad geometry. And if you eyeball it, then it's just not accurate. So instead, we're going to go up to Edit, Preferences, and type in Loop. Then enable the Loop tools. And now I'm going to delete this face, and then select these two edges again. Right click, and Bridge Edge Loops. We're back to where we started, but we now have this menu. And we can increase the number of cuts, and we can change the interpolation to Blend Surface. And there you go. This is also very handy for making holes in things. So if I subdivide this, increase the cuts, and say we want a, a hole going through the middle, well, I need to just select the middle. So select those faces, right click, loop tools, and choose circle. So that'll change it to a circle. And then you do again, right click, loop tools, bridge. And there you go, a hole in our geometry. So we've got this little thingy we made earlier, and I'll show you something else we can do with it. You go up to edit preferences. This is my favorite plugin. It's called tissue. So add that. We can now shift A and add a plane. Just scale that up and then control A to apply the scale. And then I'm just going to subdivide that a bunch of times. Move that off to the side. So now what we're going to do is select our funny little shape and then select our plane and then come down to tissue and click tessellate. And look at that. Got a weird kind of 
cheese looking thing, but you can do more. With that plane selected, you can now actually move the plane away and we can, you know, you can manipulate this in certain ways, make it a more fluid shape and then just grab that weird thing we made a second ago, go down to data and in tissue tessellate, first of all, refresh and you'll see it follows that shape. Then we can also change tri, quad, fan, patch, frame. But there's some funny kind of geometry going on there. So what I'd do is I'd add a subdivision surface modifier, set that to two. And now if we refresh, definitely made it smoother. So you can go to camera view by clicking the camera icon and we can then control the camera by rotating it and moving it along these axes. That can sometimes screw with your composition. So instead you can shift it like this which helps stop the composition from changing. You can also come down to viewport display and then composition grids. And this can be very helpful for setting out your scene um, and giving it that more kind of put together look. And here are a few shortcuts that I find very useful. So in edit mode, you can press E to extrude and S to scale. Press Control F to extrude faces, Control E to extrude edges, and Control V to extrude vertices. You can also press Alt E to extrude faces along normals. Want to make this cool wave effect in Blender? I'll show you how. Press Shift A and add a plane. Scale that up. Tap into edit mode and then subdivide it. We'll do 100 because you need quite a lot of geometry for this. Then come to your modifiers and add a deform wave modifier. Now we can hit play and look at that go. When we can play around with these and look at that, kind of mesmerizing. And then my final tip is subscribe because I don't have a deal with Squarespace and I'm not going to be pestering you with plugging my online course but I am still learning this stuff as well. So the things that I find interesting, you might too. But that's up to you and thanks for watching. Bye.